If you're an AI art generation geek like myself, then you've been watching the Flux model, I'm sure, with great appreciation, as we all have, even despite some of its little shortcomings here and there. And you know, what's really hot right now is getting your own face into these things via Alora's. It stands for Low Rank Adaptation, and it's just a way for you to tweak an existing model to include your information in there, whether it's your face, or whether it's your cat, or your friend's face, or an object, or a style, it doesn't matter. You can use Alora's to customize the Flux models if you have the tool tools and know-how. Now, if you're like me, you've looked at a bunch of videos about how to do that and you've seen all sorts of solutions. Some run locally and those videos will take you about an hour to get through when they talk about how to install all the software and oh, make sure you have the right GPU and all that other stuff. And even the ones that talk about how to set up various softwares on remote servers, it's still a process to go through. I'd like to share a way with you that you can create a custom LoRa in about an hour for about $1.19 over at Mimic PC. You don't have to run your own GPU and in fact, you can train multiple LoRas at once. Hey, it's it's not your computer, it's not your system, it's not your resources being eaten up. I've tried several of these solutions myself, including ones that I've installed locally, because I'm a geek that way, but man, oh man, it just took up a ton of resources. I couldn't do anything else on my computer. And this way I'm gonna show you, it really truly couldn't be simpler. You don't have to mess with settings or anything. The default settings, just as they are, are gonna give you great results. Why don't I stop talking about it and just show you? This will, of course, require that you have an account over at Mimic PC, but having a Mimic PC account allows you to run the latest creative AI software on another machine without having to have any experience on setting things up. I've shared a couple of videos about Mimic PC in the past, and I'm thrilled to share that they're going to be a regular sponsor over the next few weeks. So I'm going to be featuring a lot of the tools that they have here and show you how to use them, especially for those of you who do not have powerful computer systems of your own but would like to get started in AI. So we're going to start with the fun stuff creating custom LoRa's of your face or a pet and showing you how to use those LoRa's either on Mimic PC or on your own machine. The most important element in any kind of training like this is the source images. They've got to be of high quality and they've got to have the right variety for the model to be able to be flexible enough to give you creative options when you go to use these models. I ran several tests in preparation for this video and the first test I ran was on my face using 30 images. I've used these very images like a year ago to create Stable Diffusion 1.5 models and I already know what's wrong with these images, but I used them anyway for this test to see what would happen but let me give you a heads up first of all you don't need 30 go with 20 make sure they are various angles various lighting various clothing various scenarios otherwise your model will be too locked in and you won't have a lot of flexibility you also want to avoid shots like this where my head is way up close to the lens and it distorts it this is another example I'm way too close this is another example I'm way too close. The lens distortion is just weird. And this too, too close, it looks distorted. What's going to happen is that the model learns that this is what my face looks like, distorted. So I'm going to get varied results. But don't worry, I learn my lesson as we go along. And by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly what to do. But I'm telling you right now, 20 images is good because I did so many models with the 1.5 stable diffusion model are at 512 by 512 resolution and I've tested these and they work great but you can also use 1024 by 1024 and of course they'll be that much better but I got to say I'm not at all disappointed with the results I'm getting with my existing 512 by 512 images. Once you've got all your images you're ready to go to Mimic PC and launch AI Toolkit. Once you've set up an account over at Mimic PC you're just going to log in and you're going to be taken to the screen where you have all of your apps. Now, just to show you, these are some of the apps that you can run here. Automatic 1111 is a very common stable diffusion interface for those who are interested in AI art and animation. RBC is for voice cloning. Olama allows you to interact with large language models. It just goes on and on. Face Fusion for face swapping. Koya SS is another model training tool. Fucus, Comfy UI, Chats, all sorts of tools in here that you can play with without having to learn anything about configuring them. Today, we're going to use AI Toolkit to train these Laura's. And when you see how simple it is, you're going to be like, I can't believe I wasted all this time trying to figure out other alternatives. To get started, you're just going to click on Quick Start. And I'm going to recommend that you choose the Large Pro computer. You're going to have 24 gigabytes of RAM. I've tested this. It is twice as fast as going with the large model for a dollar. So you're for 19 cents more per hour, you're getting double the speed. Those were my results on more than one occasion. Now, because this is a model that's trained and it takes about an hour, you're going to want to make sure that you don't run out of time or you set it up to automatically extend your time as you need to. So that's what I like to do. I just do an automatic extension and it says the mission time will automatically be extended by 30 minutes before expiration expiration automatically. But I'm going to recommend that you just set a timer and you know in about an hour, almost exactly an hour, it's going to be ready for you with you if you use this large pro machine. So once you've chosen that, you just click on create and start and in a couple of minutes, 
the machine will be set up. You don't get charged for any of this setup time. Okay, here's the interface for AI Toolkit, and it really is very simple. To get started with your lore, you're gonna name your lore. You want it to be a unique name. So in my case, I'm just gonna call it Bob Doyle. And then the trigger word will also be Bob Doyle. And then for upload your images, I can just click and drag all these images in here, let them upload. And now we have the option to caption all of these images. Now I had heard that with people, it's not as important to do the captioning for flux lores for whatever reason so i ran this first test without doing it and it worked fine as you'll see so for now we'll skip this part but in a moment i'm going to give you an example where i do use the captioning it gives you an example test prompt a person in a bustling cafe and then bob doyle that's the trigger word i gave it up here so whenever it sees bob doyle the model is going to produce some sort of version of my face and that's it you just click start training it's going to tell you that the training has started locally and your laura will only be available locally because you didn't log in with a right token to hugging face we want things locally because we're going to download them and use them on our own machine if we do that but we're also going to want to have them downloaded so we can upload them to another instance of a machine here on mimic pc we can check the progress by clicking the logs tab and it will show you what's going on here this quantizing transformer, if you're using the large pro, this step right here is gonna take you about three minutes. If you use the large and not the large pro, it's gonna take you about six minutes and everything else is doubled in time as well. But once that three minutes is done, you'll get the log readout. After about an hour, the training will be done and we'll have created a folder for the model that you've created. So you can see on this machine, I've created the Bob Doyle one, and then I also created one from Tracy. If I open this folder, you're gonna find the model files in various stages. If I mouse over the names, you can see that the main file here, bobdoyle.safetensors, that's the final model that's got all 1,000 steps that it defaults to. And these are the models saved at various steps during the process, 250 steps, 500 steps, 750 steps. But I found that for the most part, the final one is fine, although I very often will download the final one and the one right before it. These others you don't really need in order to use these models. So we'll just click on download the safe tensors one, and then I'll download the 750 step one as well. And now I have them on my local hard drive. So now I can close out this machine and now I can test this LAR right here on Mimic PC. I'm gonna open up an instance of a program called Forge, which is already set up to run Flux models and LORAs. And I'll leave a link to this particular workflow in the description so that you can go right to it if you'd like. Start this machine. Here's what Forge looks like. Now this is an instance that I've used several times. And so I already have some models loaded up in here, but let me show you how to get this LORA up here so that you can use it. Under the file tab, you have these various folders. And what you're going to want is the model folder. You're going to open that up and then inside the LORAS folder, if this is your first time running this, you won't have anything in here. This will be completely empty. But to add LORAS to this, you just click this little up arrow here and then click here to select the files. I've got these LORAS I've created here. I would just select them and click on open and then they will upload. Once they appear here after the upload, you're going to go to the LORAS tab and you're going to click the refresh icon here. That's going to make sure that the latest thing you've uploaded appears. To use these LORAs, all you need to do is click on them and the tags necessary to make them work will appear up here in the text prompt and then you can just write around them. For example, the model that we just trained is this one here, Bob Doyle. So I'm just going to say Bob Doyle posing for a professional headshot in a steampunk bar. I'm going to click the generation tab here so I can make sure my settings are right. All of this is already set up for Flux and the dev model, which is what your Laura was trained on if you didn't change anything in the advanced settings. So now we have a 896 by 1152 image. We're going to create one of them and we're just going to click on generate and see what we get. Just a reminder that all of the sampling steps and everything else is already preset for you with this particular instance of Forge. I wrote steampunk bark instead of bar, so it'll be interesting to see what they come up with. The first time you run any of these things, it takes a second to load that dev model. It's pretty big. Progress bar means it is at work and it will start with a really high time and it'll get faster as it goes along. Okay, so I have a picture of a dog. I didn't use the keyword up here. I just used, I just referenced the lore with this. And I didn't say Bob Doyle person, which is what you need to do. So we've learned a valuable lesson here with a smiley dog. Let's click generate again, shall we? There we go. That's more like it. All right. Now here's our final image. It did a pretty good job. Now it might be a little odd looking. This is where you can play with the amount that the Laura is applied. Right now we have it at full strength. I could play with it and maybe do 0.9. I could do 1.1 and we just play around with that. And that's also going to depend sometimes on the prompt. So it's not always like this is one size fits all, but it does get a very good, highly detailed model. This is very high res. Look at the skin texture. 
texture on that. That is kind of crazy. And they got my crooked nose. This did a better job than any of my attempts at my face on the SD 1.5 model. There were a few faces that I had problems with getting accurate, and this was one of them. But this has done a very nice job. Here's the next generation. <laughs> look at that hair. But that's the hair that was in those pictures. If you look at them again, they're pretty wild. But still, very nice, high quality image. I couldn't be happier. So that's how it works with a person. What about a cat or an animal? But in this case, a cat. In this case, my cat. Particularly Lucy, my orange tabby. So I'm going to make a model of her. I'm going to call this Lucy Tabby Cat. I could probably do something called Lucy Tabby Cat. But in this case, I wrote Lucy Tabby Cat. And I use the same thing for the trigger words. Lucy Tabby Cat. You want your trigger words to be something that this, the model is probably not already trained on. So you want something unique. And then I drag 20 images of my cat wearing the pink collar. Just whatever look I want her to maintain, I want to make sure that most pictures have that. So we've got the pink collar in every single one. If I had one criticism in retrospect when choosing these, because again, I did this a long time ago, is that she's very different sizes in here. We have her as a kitten and we have her full grown. It doesn't really cause a problem, but it could on down the line. Now, in this case, because it's not a person, I decided to use the captioning. And all you have to do to do that is click this button and it will just start its work. It describes fully what's going on in the image. The cat, but yes, where is it? What's the colors around it? This again helps the model be more flexible when it's time to generate images. Here we have more detailed descriptions. An orange cat laying on top of a bed next to a pillow with a pink collar around its neck. In the background there are a few objects on the table and a watermark on the image. I guess that's the time up there on the top. An orange and white cat laying on top of a bed. You get the idea. And then it says trigger and then that's the Lucy Tabby Cats. Now we have 20 images and 20 captions. I mentioned the dev model before. If you wanted to train it on the other, the quicker Schnell model, you can do that by clicking here. But generally it's agreed that the overall quality of the dev model is better. So go ahead and do that. Even though we've selected a card with 24 gigabytes of VRAM, you still want to click low VRAM because when I tested it without doing that, it actually was looking for something like 90 gigabytes of memory or something like that. Anyway, it didn't run. All that to say, for the most part, you can just leave that closed and not even deal with it. Once you generate these captions, you can just click start training and wait. I don't actually have the Lucy Laura loaded onto this particular uh, instance of Forge, so why don't we do that now? We'll click on Select Files. We'll find Lucy Tabby Cat. And you'll notice the progress right here, Lucy Tabby Cat Safe Tensors. Now that that's done, we can go back over here to the Laura tab and click Refresh again. And now we will find Lucy Tabby Cat in the list. Actually, let's clear this out. Then we'll click on Lucy Tabby Cat. We'll be sure to use the trigger word now, Lucy Tabby Cat Cat. OK, reading a magazine by the fire. Go over here to Generation. This seems more like a landscape image to me, so I'm going to take these dimensions and flip them just by clicking this right here and click Generate. All right, there she is. That's her. Now I know all orange tabby cats look alike, but you know, we all know our babies, right? Now because this is a flux model, we can do fun stuff like adding text. So how about Lucy Tabby Cat at the beach ling on her back in the sun next to a sign that reads pet me and generate okay maybe we won't be laying on the beach let's do a normal pose there were no samples of her laying on her back so let's put lucy tabby cat cat at a coffee shop sniffing a steaming cappuccino there is a sign on the table that says no cats allow generate and you'll notice we're not using any negative prompt either. And you can't even do that with these flux models. You can't type anything here. All right, the obvious problem there is that's not her. Let's play with the strength of the prompt. Because we know that she's in there, we just saw her. So I'm going to just say 1.2. There she is. We didn't get the no cats allowed in this particular thing either. But we got Lucy back. Now, Flux loves way more elaborate prompts than what I'm giving it. So that's why I like the tool called Glyph. Glyph allows you to take a simple prompt and make a really cool Flux prompt out of it. So let's take that lame prompt I created before. I'll just say cat at this point because it won't know what the keyword is over here. I'm going to leave it on hyperrealism. I'm going to copy that prompt, go back and type it here and paste it here. I'll remove the hyperrealistic scene there and I'll say Lucy Tabby Cat just perched on polished mahogany, blah, blah, blah. No cats tallower. Let's back her off now. Let's just take her back to normal one strength. Because sometimes when it looks like this, there's just certain aspects of these renderings that it says, oh, the Laura's at play too much. It's kind of making things a little yucky. So we'll back off a little bit. 
give more strength to the prompt. And there she is again, totally bored to be there. Normally the Flux model does a great job on text. I think I might need to be play again with the balance of the prompt itself, giving various emphasis here and there. Maybe if I pop this up a bit, see if we give more emphasis to the text. There we go, no cats allowed. And she's completely ignoring that and falling asleep in the cappuccino. As I said, you don't have to use these Loras here on Mimic PC. You can use AI Toolkit to quickly generate these Loras like I'm doing, and then use them on your own installation of Comfy UI or Forge or Automatic 1111 or anything that accepts Loras. Let me show you. So now I'm on my local machine. This is one of many Flux-based workflows I have. This is one I will probably eventually send up to Mimic PC to share, but I'm not quite done with it yet, but it'll serve its purposes here. And there's plenty of Flux workflows for you, not just in Forge, but also on Comfy UI at Mimic PC to try your LoRa's out. But I just wanted to show you what's happening locally. To use these LoRa's in Comfy UI, you're going to load them into the LoRa models folder for your Comfy UI installation. In most cases, you're going to drill down into Comfy UI and then models, and then there'll be a folder called Laura's. Now, in my case, though, I've got all my models loaded into a previous installation of Automatic 11.11, so I have them pointing to that Laura's model folder. You just need to put the file wherever you're used to putting your Laura's. Same goes for if you're using these Laura's on Mimic PC. You will upload them just how I showed you to upload them to Forge. If you've run a Comfy UI machine on Mimic, you'll load those Laura's into that folder. I've loaded the Bob Doyle Laura that I created before, and I put in this prompt here, and I'm just playing with getting the settings right. I went to Glyph, and I said, 60-year-old man with brown hair waiting in line for a movie. It created this prompt, which I pasted here, and I'm going to generate it again, because I made some changes to the previous run. I ran a prompt, but once again, I forgot to put in the trigger word. It was getting pretty close anyway, but instead of 60-year-old man, and I'm 58, at least for 20 more days, I'll put a weathered Bob Doyle with salt and pepper brown hair. All right, I'll make sure the Laura is chosen in my Laura loader here. Right now I've got the strength of the model at 0.95. I've been playing with various strengths on either side of one and it could change from prompt to prompt. I'm just gonna cue this prompt. And in the meantime, let me go to Glyph and create another 60 year old man with brown hair walking along the beach at sunset, holding a sign that says I'm lost. Run that, get this prompt, copy on over here. Here's the image. Boy, it's almost exactly like this other image. Have I got the seed the same? No, nope. that prompt is very specific. Let's use the new prompt about walking on the beach and again, replace 60 year old with Bob Doyle, the trigger word, and click on Q prompt. All right, that's great. Let's load the Lucy one I did. We'll create a little prompt for the cat. Tabby cat staring a tank of fish. Paste that prompt. We're gonna say Lucy tabby cat. Q and there she is with her pink collar and everything. Wow. So that's how you can super easily create your own custom LoRa for the Flux model and test them and run them on Mimic PC or a PC of your own. Stay tuned because I'll be sharing lots of really cool tools from this platform that you can play with, especially if you're into the creative AI space, voice cloning, face swapping. It's all there for you without the need for a GPU on your system. If this is the kind of stuff you like to learn about, well, why not subscribe to this channel? Because it is what we talk about all the time. If you subscribe now, I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you do not, I will look for you, I will find you, and I will...